Hi, it's Jackie schomburg Minen here. Today I want to talk about the importance of quantity over quality. Not to say we want to put out art that's not top quality, but we can't have that be our only option for success. Because so much of art, just like so much of anything else that we want to learn or we want to practice, you're not going to get a hole in one every time you go golfing. It's just not going to happen. But that's always your goal. So how do you get closer to that hole in one? You keep golfing. You golf every weekend, every day, twice a day, whatever it is, however much time you can spend on it. If that's your goal, that's what you want to do. If it's your goal to create better art or to um, evolve into your own personal signature style that people recognize as your own, the only way that I've found, that I've seen other people do, that I've experienced myself, is to keep making more art. So show up more often. A long time ago, I really thought that the best way to go about this was to spend all my time on one painting. So that painting could be the absolute best painting and use all of my time and effort on that. And what it did was freeze me. Completely felt stuck. So much pressure on this one painting to turn out well because now I had spent a week, four weeks, six months, whatever on this one painting that I couldn't, it was too precious. I couldn't find distance between myself and the painting and I couldn't allow it to be good enough. It had to be perfect. And of course, perfection is an illusion. Part of the beauty of the 100 Day Project is the opportunity to show up and get lots of quantity, right? You have 100 days so you can keep working and make it manageable so that you don't have to worry about making every day the best thing. You just want to get it done and check it off the list. So I love the project for that. I love making things doable. I love achievable goals, even when we're late, <laughs> achieving all 100 of them. But I'm still going to keep going because A, I picked a great project that I'm really having fun with. And B, I really think it's important to, to make a lot of a thing. If you want to get better at making the thing, you have to make more things. Cupcakes, holes in one, uh, business, right? Accountants don't just go learn how to add and then they're accountants. They have to practice all their numbers. This is the opposite of accounting. There's so much value in just the repetition and more iterations using your creative self to get what you'd like. So I'm going to talk specifically about a few of my collages that I am working on in this video and we will talk more as the video starts. So again, I'm starting with this eight <laughs> kind of a grid situation. And just like the last video, I am consistently thinking about value, shape, color, all of the things. And I also want to just get it done. One of the things I value the most about the 100 Day Project is that you check the box after you do the thing. You don't check the box after you've made the best thing you've ever made in your entire life. You don't check the box after you've made something beautiful. You don't check the box after you've invented an entirely new form of art. You check the box after you do the thing. So after I make a collage, I check the box. That one's done. I number it. I sign it. I move on. I think it's a really good way to approach art. You have to do the thing. You have to make the art in order to make more art. If you only make one thing, you're going to spend the rest of your life on it and it's never going to be done because it's never going to be good enough. At least that's me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I used to never call things finished because I was so afraid that once I said that it was finished, that meant it was open to criticism. It was open to critique. It was open to someone saying, oops, what about this part over here? Can you change that? Right? It was open to all the judgment, but if I just said it was, oh, I'm still working on it, I'm still working on it, then no one could say anything about it and I didn't have to take anything personally about my choices because it was still not done yet. I'm still working on some things. And I didn't realize that I was doing that at the time. 
but looking back, I see that's exactly what it was. It was like, it was a coping skill for me to not, I don't know how to describe it. I guess, right, I didn't want my voice to be unacceptable to anyone else. Gosh, maybe that's what it was. That sounds pretty accurate, right? If I draw my line in the sand and say, this is done, this is, this is how I like it, I want it to be done, and someone else says it's not good enough, then that means that my opinion of my own work was wrong. That's what I was thinking. That's not reality. The reality is, and this is what I love about being an artist, is I'm the artist, so when I say it's done, it's done. And actually, I feel like my friend Chris Acton told me this because I used to ask people, hey, do you think this is done? Is it done enough? Is, can, I, is, can I put this up at the art fair? Because I'm not sure it's done enough. Maybe it's not quite done yet. And I think she said, like, Jackie, no one knows what's done and what's not done until you tell them it's done. So if it's done for you, that means it's done. I was like, oh, I can do that? Like, I have that much power? <laughs> it's like, of course you do. You're the person creating it. And looking back, it seems so silly because it's so simple. But I don't think I'm alone in that. So if you today are, re are watching this thinking, yeah, but how do I know if it's done? The answer, for better or worse, and some of you are not going to love this, it's done when you say it's done. And you can judge, you can decide when it's done based on any variable you'd like. It can be done when the paper's filled. It can be done when you've, you know, if you have a little assignment for yourself where you say, I'm gonna use three scraps. Okay, when you have three scraps glued down, it's done. You can say it's glued down when I like it. Great. Whatever the measure that you want to use for your art, and it, it's okay if it's completely intuitive. I don't know how it's done. I just know when it's done. That's largely most of my work, I feel. I don't know why it's done now, but now it's done. Last week, it wasn't done. Last month, it wasn't done. Last year, it wasn't done. But I added one thing, or I just got used to it being the way it was, and I can see it more objectively now, and it really is done. A lot of us, especially like highly sensitive people and people pleasers, and I don't know, can you guys raise your hand if you're in my group over here? <laughs> we think that we need to justify our art, why we think it's done, why we think it's good, why we think it's even considered art. And maybe this is coming with age or experience or just repetition of my own art or who knows why. But I am getting so much more comfortable not explaining myself to other people. And it is so wonderful. So the earlier you can get on that train, uh, please get on it. It's so nice to be here. And it does not mean I don't have any doubts. It doesn't mean I never feel insecure because I do feel all of those things. But the more art I make and the more I realize that I can just make art and any one thing I make does not define me. That's the other beauty of working in large quantities. I have a hundred collages. I will have a hundred collages at the end of this. I don't yet. So any of the 100 doesn't define me as an artist. Even all 100 together don't define me as an artist, but that gets closer because now there's a hundred examples of what I do. So if I showed if, if you took one of my collages and showed it to your friend and said, hey, I watched this video and this artist made this, they wouldn't necessarily know what the rest of my art looks like. If you gave them 100 of these collages and said this artist who made this video that I watched made these, then they might be like, oh, cool. I like that style. Or, oh, wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot, <laughs> right? right? That's not subtle. That's not beige. Doesn't match my couch. I'm not interested also totally acceptable, but they would have a better idea of my art and what I do. The same is true with you. If you've made one thing, it's a representation of part of you, absolutely. But the more you make, the more you 
will find your style. Because any one of these collages, even the ones I'm making today, which is not a huge sample of what I've done so far, it still defines part of the whole collection. And it's not that many pieces. So if and when you are feeling stuck and if and when you are doubting yourself and your craft and your skills and your visions and all these things, I would highly encourage you to make smaller things and make a lot of them. Again, I can link to some grid journal videos because I think grid journaling is a fabulous way to do that. It's so nice to be able to make a lot of things all at the same time and in a small amount of time so that you actually get to see progress. Grid journaling, you can make, I make 19 sometimes on, or not 19, 18 on one spread of my sketchbook. Teeny tiny little things. It does not take much paper to fill them if you're doing collage, does not take much, much paint, does not take much time. It's a very, it's, it's so small and it's so achievable, but the feeling you get afterwards when you see that you just made 18 tiny paintings or nine tiny paintings or six tiny paintings, it's really fun. And all of a sudden you're feeling productive and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I like how those colors go together. And all of a sudden you're learning things about, oh, I really like this rough edged, um, you know, cardstock that I glued down. I should find more of that. Maybe that's what my, my big painting needs on the wall, right? And maybe you don't find anything that's that easily transferred <laughs> to a different piece of art, but maybe you're just learning how you like to see things, how you get things from your brain onto paper. And instantly now you're 18 iterations ahead of where you were before you started. I think that we too often skip over the little things, the little practicing things. And we focus only on, well, if I want to sell art in galleries, I need to make a million not even a million, because that would actually be wonderful repetition, but I need to only focus on one or two giant paintings. Okay, and honestly, maybe that works for you. I don't know. For me, that would feel like so much pressure. So I like having the flexibility of making small things, getting a lot of decision-making and a lot of just little successes under my belt, which really builds my confidence when I head to something bigger. And as you've probably noticed, I don't recreate the little things into big things, but all of the experience of those little things is still with me when I make the big things. So my confidence in being able to figure it out eventually comes with me. My, uh, lots of times the color palettes I use comes with me. I made uh, an entirely green grid journal page, all greens. And I never used greens. That's why I chose green that one time. And it ended up turning into a six part uh, series for my husband that was like a abstracted vision of his garden. And that never would have happened. I never would have said, oh, I'm gonna take six 12 by 12 panels and use green and just see what happens. I don't know why I wouldn't, because now I feel like I should just do that. <laughs> but right, it's the, it's the being able to see a lot of change in a small amount of time is very helpful. So if you are not someone who works in series and works on many things at once, and you're feeling stuck on the things you are working on, I cannot recommend having achievable dreams and achievable goals and working small, okay? or doing a, a whole bunch of big things. You can also do that. It's more expensive, it's more time consuming, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. That's the best thing to do if you're looking for galleries and other things like that. If you're just experimenting and playing around and you wanna just make art and play, by all means, start grid journaling. I will send you, I have a free template on how to do that and I can send it to you. I will put a link up in the right-hand corner here. And I want 
you to try that because if you're just sitting wishing you were making art and not actually making anything, you're missing out on a lot of fun. And I think if you're watching this and you're interested in making art, you're looking for some of that fun. So again, repetition, do as many repetitions of things as you can and you will learn so much about yourself and your art and you'll have more fun. Isn't that what it's all about?